Hello there, this is Glenn Berry with Dr. DMV LLC, and I'm back with another video. In this video, I'm going to show you how to flash the BIOS in an ASUS ROG Strix X670E-E motherboard using the BIOS flashback feature. Before we get started, I want to show the key steps to using this procedure. I'm not going to read every single step. You can pause it and read it yourself. But the important thing here is that you download the correct BIOS for your exact motherboard from the ASUS website, and then you rename it to the exact name that's needed for that motherboard. This is really important. This is the main reason this fails for a lot of people because they don't follow those two steps. The first step in this procedure is to find and download the latest BIOS for your exact motherboard on the ASUS website. This video is for the ROG Strix X670E-E gaming Wi-Fi motherboard. So the link will be in the description, but it's right here at the top for this particular motherboard. And once you get into the support site for that, you want to go to driver and tools, and then you want to go to BIOS and firmware like I have here. And this shows all the BIOS versions that are available. And at the time of recording, the latest BIOS version is 0922. So that's what I'm going to go ahead and download. So when I do that, it comes down very quickly. It's a very small file. And then we'll go in and do what we have to do to get this file ready to use in this procedure. So now we have to get that file that we downloaded ready to use for this procedure. So the first thing you have to do is extract the zip file. So you can just right click and pick extract all, and that's gonna create a folder right here with the extracted files. And if you open that up, you'll see a BIOS renamer executable, and then you'll see the actual BIOS file that we need. And you can manually rename this if you want to, but it's easier to just double click on this BIOS renamer. So when we do that, it opens like a little command window and renames the file to the exact file name that it needs to be for this motherboard. And if you have a different motherboard, it's going to rename it to the right file name for that motherboard. Now we have this renamed BIOS file, and we need to copy that down to the root of our USB drive down here. But before we do that, what we should do is check the formatting properties of the USB drive because this has to be FAT32. It can't be XFAT or NTFS. And this is a common reason why this procedure fails for people when they try to do this because they don't have it formatted in FAT32. So I'm okay on my flash drive. So now what I'm going to do is just copy this file down to the root of my USB drive. And what I mean by the root is it has to be at the top here. If you've got any folders in here on your flash drive, you can't copy it into the folder. It needs to be in the root, just like you see right here. Before we go any further, let's just take a moment and talk about why are we doing this? What's the point of this? Well, this is just a low level way to update your BIOS if your system won't post. And post means power on self-test. If your system will already post, you don't need to use this procedure. And there's an easier way to do this that's built into the BIOS setup program. But the most likely scenario that you'd be using this procedure is maybe your CPU is not supported by the BIOS version that came from the factory. Another reason you might be using this procedure is your BIOS was corrupted by a previous BIOS flash attempt and you're trying to recover it using this procedure. Now, certain newer Ryzen 7000 series CPUs are likely gonna require this procedure, and that includes all the new X3D SKUs, and then all the non-X SKUs that came out after the original Ryzen 7000 series were released. And the ASUS support site has a CPU compatibility list that'll show you each CPU and what BIOS version that it needs to actually make this work. So we have to connect the main 24 pin power connector right there, and then the eight pin EPS connector right there, and that's it. We don't need a CPU, we don't need any memory installed, and we don't need a GPU installed. And then after that, the next step is to turn on the power supply. Now you don't want to turn the system on at the power at the case power button. Now we're just about ready to flash the BIOS. There's the BIOS port you want to use for your USB drive, and there's the BIOS flashback button. 
So what we have to do next is put that USB drive that you prepared in the previous steps in that correct USB port, and then you just hold down the BIOS flashback button for three seconds, and then a little green light will start flashing, a little green LED, and you can see it right there, and we'll switch uh, the focus to be a little bit better, and this is sped up 10 times real time. And if your USB drive has an LED, you might see it flashing. And that's all you have to worry about is the BIOS flashback LED. Just watch that, and it's going to flash for about five to six minutes. Now, if it just flashes five times and stops, you've got a problem. Let's talk about some common mistakes that people make when they try this procedure. The most common mistake in my experience is people download a BIOS file for a different ASUS motherboard. ASUS has a lot of motherboard models with similar names to this one, and you have to have the correct file for your exact motherboard model. Another common mistake is not renaming the BIOS file to the proper name. That's crucially important. Also, not having the USB drive being formatted in FAT32 and not having the BIOS file in the root of your USB flash drive or other common mistakes. Another one that I see quite a bit is somebody has a fully assembled system and they turn it on with the case power button so it's running when you try this. That's not going to work. You have to make sure the system is not running and you just want to make sure that it's plugged in and the power supply switch is turned on. So those are some of the most common mistakes that I see people make. And hopefully you won't make those mistakes after watching this video. And this is really simple to do, but you've got to follow the directions exactly. There's no margin for error whatsoever. And then finally, here's some frequently asked questions. The first one that comes up a lot, can you do this on a fully assembled system? And the answer is yes, you can, but again, don't turn on the system with the case power button. Just follow the directions in the video and make sure that it's plugged in. And do you need to do this if your system will already post? No, you don't. You can just use the regular ASUS Easy Flash 3 feature. And then another one that comes up is, can you use a beta BIOS version for this? You can if you want. I think it's safe, but if you don't want to, don't. And then finally, the last question that comes up the most is, I've tried this and it didn't work. What do I do? Well, if you follow the directions, you shouldn't have a problem. But if you miss something, put a comment in the video and tell me what you did and what symptoms you're seeing, and I can try to help you troubleshoot it. But if you just say, oh, it didn't work, I probably can't help you very much. This is Glenn Berry with Dr. DMV LLC, and I want to thank you for watching this video. If you like the video, please hit the thumbs up button. If you have any questions, please leave a comment. And finally, if you want to see more content like this, please subscribe because that really helps the channel out. Really? You have a lot to say.